in a democratic state, the democratic system itself is established for the people. I mean, it's in the definition. Without the people, there is no democracy. But what happens when the people lose trust in people that they have elected into the office? How can they regain the confidence of the people? My name is Justina Angyating, and this is State of the Culture, brought to you by Izesan Speak Asan. We're all about promoting the African culture and Nigerian culture as well. Now, if you're trying to learn a language, I don't know why you've not checked out our app yet. It's Izesan Speak Asan. You can get it wherever you download your apps. Anyway, check it and learn on the go. Now, with me here, I have my, I don't know what to call him, my co-host. Let him introduce himself. Let's go do it. <laughs> you know what? And we should note that we're missing one person. But yes. first of all, it's me, Frederick, your social prefect. Uh, we are back. Yep. And just saying, never said we miss you. Just, you know, you're the kind of balance, you know. And you're joining us on the next one. So don't worry. You'd see her. And let me just leave it at that. <laughs> okay. So to talk about today's topic, really, we're just trying to discuss how the people, how the Nigerian government can regain the trust of Nigerians. To talk about this, I have an honorable member of the House of Representatives. He is the representative of ASAN Central, ASAN West, and Igweben Federal Constituency. Please help me welcome Honorable Joseph Ejonwili. I had to take my time because I've been practicing your name. Please tell me I got it right. You got it right. You don't want yes. it. We're very particular about pronouncing names yes. properly here because we're promoting our culture and I can't be caught, you know, mispronouncing mm. your name. So Miss the elders came to the rescue. Mm, elders came for you see That's our what names means? are interesting. That's brilliant. Elders came to the rescue. Yes. Wow. I, Okay, so first off, you know, to kick this off, we like to talk about languages a little bit. So, can you tell us the languages you speak? Just uh, Isan and uh, English. Okay, can you say anything for us in Isan? Anything at all? Bodiaye. Bodiaye, okay, what does that mean? How are you? Oh, I'm fine. I'm a bit worried. <laughs> if you want to learn more, just know that ASAN is on is on the app. You can go ahead and download the yes, app and yes, learn ASAN. Yes. That egg before it means it's well with you. Mm. Mm. Okay. So let's go right into it. You're a member of the House of Representatives, and you know they are considered the apex pal um, parliament. So when it comes to the powers of you know the National Assembly. What are their established powers and some misconceptions? What are the things that you can and cannot do? Because people look up to the legislators to do a couple of things. So what are the things that you can actually do and the things that you cannot do? Well, governance is, uh, is on three layers. You have the executive, you have the legislators, you have the judiciary. I'm in the legislature. How is basically to, to make laws for the peace, order, and good governance of the Federation. That's our basic duties. Okay, so in one of your powers, you know, it also states that you have the power, for instance, to intervene in, in between the government and union bodies, labor union bodies. So would you, when they say that, what does that actually mean when they say you can intervene? For instance, now we have ASU currently on strike and they are affiliated with their trade, un trade union affiliated with um, the Nigerian um, labor union. So when they say they can intervene, what does that mean? How can you intervene? Well, like I said, you know, we ask is to make laws for the good governance and order. Yeah. And so when you talk of uh, the government, we are part of government. Yes. It's just that we make the law the executive executes the law, and if there is a conflict, the judiciary resolve, resolve it. Okay. So if there is a problem between uh, labor and government, we are part of that government. We first of all have to look at the extent uh, laws, whether it's violated by either side. Because whatever complaint they have, it must be from the executive who implements the laws. 
So then, of course, you know the, the labor, they have agitations. And it's our duty to find out whether their ag ag agitation is reasonable. And if it takes, then, of course, we have to put pressure on the, on the executive, executive to so implement. Okay. So would you say that we are at the point where the executive is actually getting enough pressure to actually solve this issue or resolve this issue? Of course. The, you know, anything is actually about negotiation. And, you know, basically the union's uh, agitation is always about uh, implementations of agreements. Yeah. And um, more so it's about resources. And, you know, the economy now, the resources is very bad. So it's not as if the, the government signed the agreement, but where is the resources to meet the agreement? So in this, the process, then you try to bypass, and of course the other people, the union resists because it's their duty. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you mentioned the economy now. Very bad. Mm -hmm. That's the next thing we're going into. It's, it's very established that, you know, it's bad. And I think, you know, Frederick, you have something on that about the economy. I uh, don't want to go into that because I know no, you're very uh, passionate uh, about that, that part. That, that uh, question, we're just going to um, tie thing. I think one of the major things that we've come to kind of learn or what we're trying to achieve is um, try to bridge the gap in terms of how people trust those in government to do what they want to do. And um, my question is basically going to come with some statistics and maybe we can work our way around that. I think one of the major things is it's a general notion that people don't usually trust um, in general, politicians or people in government, you know, people are always saying, you know, one or two, but we are not here to um, give anything without pointing out facts or we're going to dispel any notion. You know, if you're doing your job, you are doing your job. That's the most important thing. And then I think my question going, um, my question is, there are a lot of factors that have contributed to why people may not trust um, politicians or trust the government, not even politicians trust the government. It's way beyond, you know, politicians just trust the government. Things like unemployment currently, um, which has kind of risen over the over the years from about 8%, no, 9% to 33% um, in the last couple of years. I think uh, the National Bureau of, Stat Bureau of Statistics did um, come out and or they released a stat saying that unemployment at the moment is at 33%, and that is a jump from 9%, which was in the previous government. Um, also, if we go to things like inflation, like you were saying, the economy is very, very bad. We've gone from literally having inflation at 8% to almost 20%. Food prices are about 20% higher than they were, you know, a couple of years back and 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 these are part of the troubles that, that we are seeing um security is another thing um one thing i would say it's not all bad news we can't just say it's all bad bad news before the current government it should be known that um boko haram actually held territory the size of belgium mm. in, nigeria. in nigeria and and that is insane they literally held the size of a country and the current government has been successful in getting back, you know, our lands, you know, for our people. Um, so all these factors, do they um, kind of like weigh on how you try to bridge the gap in trusting, um, in you building trust with the public? Because some of these factors are why people feel like um, not enough people are doing their jobs even if there are certain people lobbying for things to be done, but these factors are there. So I think my, my question is, how do you navigate all these factors and try to bridge um, the gap with um, what people think the government is doing or not doing and you know what, what they should be doing? Well, first, uh, uh, foundation is very important. The kind of people you are elected to positions matters a lot. So if you have the wrong persons in the position, of course the result is obvious. 
So basically, the followers have a lot to play in having a good government. If you want to have a good government, elect good people. So it's not uh, just the government, because the government is actually the people. You decide who goes there and who lives there. And there are powers that are given to uh, followers to recall, like in the House, you can recall a member that is not doing very well. And of course, you have another four years to re-elect re the executive if you don't, if they are not doing. So the, uh, it actually falls back to the people. So foundation is very, very uh, uh, important. And of course, in Nigeria in particular, we tend to de uh, depend more on government which is not too good. If you see developed uh, uh, countries, we have people like you in the private uh, sector, employing people and doing very well. You only maybe ask for assistance from, from government. But if you, you find that the recurrent expenditure of government is far higher than what you can as available for capital. Everybody wants to be a civil servant. Mm -hmm. And that tells much. Do you know that Ordinarily, if you go to any ministry now, you see that many works are duplicated. Actually, you are supposed to have fewer people, especially in this time of uh, technology, you're actually supposed to have fewer people in government. Uh, but you find that what government spend in payment, you know, this recorded expenditure is far higher than uh, capital. And of course, they keep on ceasing, and we're producing graduates every other year then who is going to employ them? Nobody, we see somebody who read agree that has never been to any farm. Because if, for example, we, we, we have, uh, we have uh, six uh, uh, geographical zones, for example, if each zone has its own farm, maybe one in fishery, husbandry, you know, uh, vegetable and all that, you see, we'll do well. People will be deployed then. I'm talking of uh, farm settlements. We'll do well. But everybody wants to be in civil service to carry fire. What fire are you carrying? So those are the problems that there is pressure on, on government. And government is finding it difficult. Finding it difficult to disengage them. But that will even cause more, more problems. So you now find that the independence on government is a big problem to our own uh, economy. The, you talk of uh, security, for example. You know, unemployment brings breed insecurity too. And of course, if we are ready to to uh, diversify, that will help the um, uh, people. Should take care of themselves. We shouldn't be seeing government as the only place that you can get uh, employment. Uh, if you if you travel, you see uh, more a few people are just that in governance. But here in Nigeria, everybody wants to be in one ministry or the other. I want, like uh, for example, uh, Minister of uh, uh, Art and Culture and Information, for example, in culture alone, they have nine agencies. It's just culture, nine agencies. What are they doing? A duplication of. Uh, functions and uh, it tests more on government because this budget you have to run the, the offices you have to buy equipment for the office you have to buy vehicles for the offices what are they doing so and government is finding it difficult to rationalize because if you try to to say okay let the ministry of uh, you know uh, culture uh, for example just be only one agency then you now have just one dg so of nine DJ. But if you do that, there will be protests, there will be... Uh, so we, we are too dependent on government and there's too much pressure on government. So those are the areas that you find uh, that insecurity is there. How many, you are talking of uh, food is, 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 uh, is on the rise. How many poor are farming? I'm even sure that you think that yam is, is plucked. How many? Of our modern people actually know how to farm. In our time, we, we have small garden. How many people even have vegetables planted around them in this country? So
thank you, sir, for, you know, emphasizing some of the things the constituents themselves can do, yeah. you know, to help out. And I really want to point something that you said. Even though, yes, we're not supposed to be fully dependent on the government, when we elect people, we have some certain kind of trust in them. But also going back to the power. The trust or expectations. Expectations and also trust that they would meet our expectations. So even going back to the powers of, say, the National Assembly, like you said, the recall, why do we have to ride out, you know, some kind of, um, would I say, poor, poor performances? If we see that someone that is performing or we voted wrongly and this person is not performing, the National Assembly has the power of impeachment. And I wouldn't say that Nigeria has had the best, you know, administration all through. We've had issues in different administrations. But why is it that up to date, we've never had an impeachment case when it comes to a president? Well, you see, uh, the, the current constitution itself, as I amended in 1999, you find that uh, it was written by the military. So, and uh, you see, to uh, impeach a president is going to be very, very difficult because the, the layers you have to pass through are too many. For example, if even the House meets today, the, both the House of Rep and the Senate meets today and say the president is impeached, you need uh, to talk of the State House of Assembly to ratify what you have just done. And we, you know, the House of Assembly, majorly they are more of, uh, they are even worse when you talk of uh, rubber stamp than the National Assembly. So how are you going to get that to talk? Because even when we legislated that they should gain their own independence, they even voted against it. Yeah. Both in finance and in status. They voted against it. Look at the local government, for example. They are supposed to be an arm of government. They're supposed to be on their own. But you find that the autonomy of the local government now is, 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 is granted by the National Assembly, but the House of Assembly, 14 out of the 36 states, have already voted against. And you need to talk. And so that one is already failed. Totally. And this so is also interesting because I think this also kind of keys into my next um, point of view. So. It is quite clear that there is a problem with the governance, the, the style of governance. And, 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 you know, this could also um, be very, this could also be linked to even like the political system that's in place. Um, like you said, we are very much dependent on government. There is a lot that goes in. It's very centralized. Um, we practice a form of federalism. I don't think that it is the true form of federalism. We still... I know it's, it's a, more on paper. Exactly, yeah. it's more on paper. It's it's something that even when it comes down to little things that states should have, like state police, we know how problematic it's been. And I, I'm sure that in your sessions, you you see how problematic this topic is. And and um, we also look at other things that are available in our political system, things like zoning, which um, yes, we understand there's a need for it in the current Nigeria in some way. Um, you need federal character? No, not, not just federal character. Federal character is a form of representation. But even zoning, when it comes to things like the presidency and all of that, the, the style of, of politics, you know, it, are these, would you say that, you know, these are things that have affected maybe, like you said, the trust, if they're so faulty, if, they're, if there's a real problem with, you know, how um, the political system is run, how government is run. Do you think this has created a misconception also within the people that's kind of led to the mistrust we have? Because the facts that you've submitted as well are pretty damning, meaning that people do not know the extent of the, the, government, of the style of governance in this country. So there is even a lack of information as to, you know, all of this, and has this translated to maybe how people do not trust that um, elected officials are doing enough, you know? You know, actually, you see, our institutions are not strong. 
because uh, if you look at uh, we are supposed to be running a presidential uh, system but well, just close by south africa here they run a mixture of both parliament and parliamentary and presidential it's a mixed up you see these the ministers are selected from members unlike here we have to whether you like it or not the law says you have to a minimum of one minister per state that's already a waste what are you doing with 36 and more than sometimes 40 ministers who we'll have to have 40 permanent secretaries. Who we'll have to have 40 SSAs. 40 SSAs. What are you doing with all that? You see, the, the, the cost of governance in this country is very, very uh, high. So uh, that's why before you can even see a minister now, you have to see SSA from SSA to PF. All that. And the file goes like that. So what, you, what would you recommend, actually? For this system. Well, if I, if, I think it would be better for, for us to run a parliamentary system of government. You know why? Because it reduces the cost of governance. Okay, look at uh, our house now. We have 360 members of the uh, House of Rep and 109 uh, members of the Senate with over 3,000 staff. Are you understanding me? Whereas if it, then you have ministers of over four. But if it's a parliamentary system, all these are all within those who are elected. Okay, you also mentioned something about, you know, trying to get to your representatives or, you know, contact them and going through all these systems. So is that currently how it is now? For instance, if one of your constituents or one of your regions, let's say Eastern Central now, wants to reach out to you, what is the process that they have to go through? A collective or individuals? How? No, we have what you call a consistency law fix. Okay. And many, incidentally, many people don't even know that you can drop your letter or a protest or anything in my consistency office. And as the, uh, my constituent, they elected me. And if I don't even have enough, enough fixed consistency office, is their duty to call? Question. Yes, why are you not having a consensus of is their right? And if uh, even in implementation of uh, uh, dividends of democracy, mm -hmm. I have what we call uh, projects I'm supposed to, to do in my consensus. If I'm not doing it right, is their duty to call my attention to it? Then we'll call uh, a town hall meeting where these things will be. Result. How many people do you even know your concerns in office? They want to meet you on one on one mm. and basically ask for physical gifts. Mm. That mm. you see, that is very true. And this is I I'm I'm very much trying to make this a human conversation so people can understand it from a real perspective. The way I'm speaking to you today, right, is something that if this was replicated on some scale a lot of people would feel closer to government because now I am speaking to you and then we are conversing on a really good, you know, platform, not just the fact that it's a platform, but we're having a proper conversation. In this same conversation, I have learned things that I previously didn't know. And this has, this is definitely going to go a long way in how I also see, you know, the attempts that, um, government or elected officials have at, 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 at governance, right? I think that one of the issues is not many people have made themselves accessible. I think we can look at it from in two ways. You mean those in government? Those in government have not necessarily made themselves accessible in certain ways. For example, one, we can say people don't have enough information to know that, yes, you can go to your constituency house and you can you know, ask for... Um, you can drop your letter, you can, you know, maybe request your presence. A lot of people don't know this, but also not a lot, a lot of officials or elected officials have made themselves available as at such. So I don't think that is very, very correct because uh, you don't even need to make yourself available. You are available for them because they, you are there because you are elected by them. So that's why you have constituency office and you have officers in the constituency. You know, like in my own case, I have five staffs. 
if you cannot be have a senior legislative aide, then you have a legislative aide, you have a secretary, and of course you have a, a PA. Mm. If you can't uh, uh, drop your letter, that's why our phones are available. It, you know, some will say they will call you because, like, I'm here on my phone and so on. That's why you can send a WhatsApp message. Even on a bad road, if you see something that you observe in your consciousness, you can send it through a WhatsApp, calling your own representative attention to it. The truth of the matter is that we actually don't uh, exploit those things. We just complain. Have you reached the same uh, of your representative? Have you ever reached him? You have not reached them. Because you have, you know, some who have one local government, three local, I have three local government that are spread over 30 watts and 19 kingdom. Their own duty is to reach, why I reach them and probably quarterly. But it's their duty to basically give me information. And it's that I can, um, that, you know, the, the house itself is more of a kind of a, a town hall or a, a court where you speak your mind, representing your constituency. Mm -hmm. That is your role. So when your constituency feeds you back and say, we need this, we need this, we need this, you cannot formally present that, even in appropriating your constituency allowance. But if there is no that feedback, like if you go home, for example, the only thing they want from you is that my wife just gave birth. I've just been discharged from the uh, hospital and uh, I'm doing burial next week. I want your physical presence. That has nothing to do with lawmakers. Yeah, so I really want to establish that. For You, know, you mentioned that because I can imagine people are calling you for unnecessary reasons. Well, to them, that is necessary, but because that's their pressure. That's yeah. what they feel that as a legislator, I'm not supposed, yeah. I'm, mine is basically to make law. Okay, like we're just having a problem in uh, those states now where they block the road to say it's not fixed. It's not our duty as legislators, but and they abuse the hell out of because we are the ones they can easily reach. Where's one that we're exposed to them? So, what they are. exactly can they reach out to you for? What are the issues? What are the things that you can handle? When things, because my duty is to call the executive arm of government okay. attention to things that we need in my own constituency. For example, if there's no, there's a town between another town that there's no bridge, uh, my attention could be called. So if I can't do, you know, on my own know that, I must have made promises. I'm going to do this and that. But there will be a particular one. Then mine is to call the attention of government. And of course, I now tell the executive this thing is happening if they can put it on budget. Okay. Yes. So this is what I was trying to establish. Yes, you, are just a, a, you, are, you can't implement anything because you don't control the fund. You can only allocate, but you cannot implement. So you only reach out to your you know, representative when it comes to matters of the community, let's say bad road, um, no water supply, and that's it, nothing else? No, 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 not, not, not just that. For example, like we talk about uh, vigilante, for example, we try to establish a, a, a okay, national vigilante. Try to like all these uh, institutions like uh, civil defense. They were all uh, a creation of the law made by us. Okay, so I think. And you see, even in their budgets, we try to influence what should go, you know, to enhance it so that it can actually meet. For example, like the police trust fund now, you see, it was created by, by the National Assembly so that they can meet some basic. Uh, demand. Of course, there are a lot of leakages. A lot of leakages. Okay. So, I guess, you know, a general question. You're part of the Ninth Assembly. So, you know, what are some of the achievements that you feel like are really notable, you know, from that? Come, because you've mentioned a couple now, and some people might not actually know some of the achievements that this particular Assembly has made. Can you just highlight a few of them? Because you generally, know, or, generally, or generally, okay. generally, generally, we we have met a lot of, you know, uh, to a lot of people don't even know when you heard, for example, the president has signed a bill 
into law, whether it's electoral, whether it's uh, this, it's actually a mandate from the House. People don't know, they just say the president has signed this, the president has signed. The president has power to make law, mm -hmm. but his, his duty is to sign the law. So these changes you are having in the electoral law today, that you must have to be physically present in the electoral process of the other way of writing from home. It's made by the national uh, Okay, so that's uh, the um, uh, electoral uh, bill. Yes, electoral bill you are seeing be... today. Uh, this change in the NNPC, for example, Petroleum Industrial uh, Act, now it's no longer okay. uh, 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 a bill. It's from the national uh, assembly. We have been able to bring up uh, good laws for the good governance of this country. But you know, uh, human errors and human is in the implementation that we have problem. If you see the budget, beautiful. If you see the national budget, what they intend to do, but where is the implementation? So you hear trillions, but it's never. You don't see the effect of you don't, the trillions. You don't see the effect of uh, trillions. For example, when the, the, uh, there was uh, this um, Abacha loot, we had the, the, the repatriated uh, 323 US dollars, million US dollars. And the, what did they do, the, the executive arm of government told you they were going to use it for the poorest of the poor. First, who determines the poorest of the poor? Number one question, actually. Who determines it? And they implemented it. Whereas if they are passed that through the budget or through the house, because each member of their 360 represents a constituency, and the 109 people represent a, you know, a senatorial. But they just implemented, and they determine the names, they determine all that, and the thing just flew off. So if there's so much things going over the over you know the national assembly's head isn't that misconduct and why yes yes why yes. is there no act against it or why is there no why is nobody being called to order exactly that's why i told you the weakness of the of the uh, institutions in nigeria whatever noise or no, i don't want that's a bad word whatever uh, uh, motion you raise, even you cry out, but you don't have power of implementation because we don't have our police. For example, if you are the Minister for Humanitarian had done something, say you ought not to. You can only make a motion to which the president will look and can it's free to ignore it. I, I think generally. But if we have our own uh, police, we have power of arrest. We have what we call subpoena. We can, right. but if you subpoena, you have power. You have police to go and implement it. They are all under the executive. So what do you do? And this is the executive we are complaining about. That's why somebody can sit down and, you know, loot more than one hundred and fifty, you know, million uh, dollar. I mean, uh, one thing we 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 we're beginning to understand is there is a lot of misinformation especially that the public has um, because a lot of the things that have even come down to it are not necessarily even within your powers and a lot of people have made senators the target of a lot of you know call it agendas um, uh, some obviously have been fueled by a lot of you know grievances of the people when exactly misconceptions and obviously when there's like the pressure, like you said, when the economy is up in, 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 in under a lot of pressure, you know, and like you said, people are not working, food prices are up, people are always looking for people to blame. But the one thing that has not gone well is probably the amount or the quality of information that is being fed to people in order to make, you know, a very, you know, a good assessment of the situation. It, it, it clearly feels that way because I'm pretty sure even you, um, a boy in this little amount of time, you've basically seen things from a different perspective because now you have a certain level of information that you didn't. And I think this is also the thing. 
is there by any chance a way of, you know, maybe even the legislative pushing for people to get the right amount of information, you know, so that people understand the true situation, understand like it is where your powers really lie and the things that you cannot do as well. Because which is one thing that I think um, Aboye tried to, to highlight, there are things that are not in your power. Constitutionally, you, you can't you, take you it. Can, you can raise emotion crying out for things to happen. Maybe if there's a deplorable road or bridge in your place, you can raise emotion on that, calling government. But you don't have power of implementation. That's, that's where the problem uh, is. And where, where is your power, really? Because yours is to make the law. Suppose it's not implemented. You have power. Even if you decide to go to the judiciary for intervention, it may not even take the whole four years before there will be judgment. So we really have problem in this uh, uh, this country, and that's why most of the time, because we are the only government that is open to everybody, because you can come to the gallery and watch whatever we are doing. You can watch us and see what you know. You can confront us. You can come to, if you see even all demonstrations. It's more also always on the national assembly gates. How many people are bothered to go to the other side? that have police, have soldiers, have civil defense to protect the gates. We don't have. They can even withdraw them from us. Are you getting what I'm saying? Absolutely. And of course, how many people can just go to the judiciary and say, I want to see the chief judge? But you can work because it's your right. You can, you can write the, this and they will have what the gate pass. You see your member. And from your member, if you insist, you can see the speaker of the house. And of course, you can, if I say I'm going to present a motion on any issue today, you can watch me from the gallery, what I actually did with Twilight. But you try to see a minister. You first of all have to prove whether you have an appointment. You have to pass through a lot of security before you can, you can see the minister if he's ready to, to see. Members don't have waiting room. We don't have. If, so, okay. no, so what I'm saying is that um, the people is, themselves have a lot to to do. You see, majority of the things that ordinarily should happen not now happen through protest. That's really the the present government in particular understands. It ought not to be. You're supposed to be able to communicate with your representative through email, through WhatsApp, through a text message and all that. Even if you decide to forward that text message to the minister, I mean, you may just ignore. So we have a very long way to go. The people themselves, the kind of uh, people you agree to uh, uh, elect. And if you see what is happening in the current uh, people wanting to, to, to replace Buhari, and you look at it. It's basically going to be uh, based on who has the financial muscle. I'm telling you, whatever noise you are hearing, I, I know that when you are campaigning, uh, you say, I'm going to give you a, a market, I'm going to give you a hospital, I'm going to give you a road. Those that came to listen to you, after you have finished all that, they believe you that you are going to be able to do it. They will not ask you, uh -huh. uh -huh means what X? Yeah. Are you, am I, do we, do we trek here? Yeah. Uh, but there will be somebody that will just come and say, well, I have an appointment in Benin, for example. I have an appointment in Abuja. I won't be able to attend to you, you people. So please, you have this to share. They will prefer that person. Yes. And say, we know, we already know that you have the capacity. Not this man that is coming to speak grammar. So that's the fault on, on the, yeah, Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And so when you elect that person that just dropped money, for example, don't have a, uh, what they call it, a manifesto. He didn't have, he didn't tell you what was going to, it's not committed to anything. And when he gets there, first he has to recover his money that you took. Fair enough. 
So we, we are all to blame, whether you are the follower or whether you are the leader. Mm, well, we all well, have failed. So, because it's, it's the byproduct of what you brought. You brought this man. Yes. You brought this woman. So, yes, we know we all, in a way, had a hand in the government of the day of, of today. You decided. Yes. Mm. So we we'll take our, our fault as well. Mm. So moving forward, because the government isn't done yet, this administration isn't done yet. They have a good number of months left, mm -hmm. you know, until February next year when we'll be having our election. election. Is there any way that this government can sit up, can regain the trust of the citizens? Is there any way? They can do that. Would you say there's a way that they can still, you know, put things in place? Well, it's more well now. Now we are in election year, and okay. uh, uh, it's difficult to have that uh, concentration on wanting to achieve. You can even you listen to the minister yesterday who was telling you that there won't be capital projects probably in the next year's budget, 2023 budget. What are we? What are we existing for? We, we, we got a lot from the uh, looted fund, which was relooted. So where is it going to? Where is it going to? So in the moment, it's relooted. So we, 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 this country is lucky. We have a lot of minerals, Sussex. We would have gone hungry, in a way. Where? Well, because there's big, if you hear the looting from rats to rabbits to, to snakes mm. and all that, you begin to wonder, where are you? The 23 million US dollar is just coming to Nigeria. And they're telling you we're going to use it for a project that's already budgeted for. If that one is given to ASO, for example, there will be peace. Exactly. So you now find that um, implementation is very, very important. You have to have a good vision for your country. There's no, there's no miracle, there's no in governance. It's just for you to have. Lay down, lay out what you tend to do and have interactions with the people. Recently, we have introduced that in our budget, you know, hearings where the civil service, uh, civil society come in and make their own uh, uh, inputs. Okay, so you're opening up the... We're opening the space for, for people to make their own input on this is the budget, this is what we tend to, uh, to do. But like because we are the only arm you can conveniently, the only arm that is blamed. You see. And somebody says, you don't want, why will you not impeach the Mr. President? It's not as simple as you go to your constitution. Go to your constitution and know the processes you have to pass through. And it can even be voided immediately you have even finished by the judiciary. Because you must pass all due processes. I'm telling you, if the National Assembly says the president is impeached, Today, that's sweet. Can the governors who are in control of those, uh, will they allow? Yeah? And of course, you know, too, we have that uh, ethnic sentiment. Mm. Huh? Uh, if, you, if you look at the structure of the constituency, it's not balanced. Yes, that's another thing. It's not balanced. You now find a place like um, Kano State have 21 members of, 24 members of the National Assembly. Edo State have just nine. So Edo State, uh, Delta State, uh, Imo State combined is now to Kano State alone. Jigawa State that is close to, that you know, was created from Kano has 16. So 24 plus 16 against the whole of your and another thing is when the same house tries to implement bills that sees that all these things are, you know, you adjusted. See, uh, the, the, the kind of uh, uh, ethnicity coming against... in the same, no, this is our own. Mm. We cannot uh, find myself in, in, in impeaching Mr. President, uh, you know, for a South town person like uh, Sibanjo to come in. Exactly. Those sentiments come in and all that. And of course, you must, everybody must be president. I think, you know, the major thing that is just resonating and the major thing that keeps being tossed out is one, we need to do a lot better when it comes to having the right information because that helps 
ask the right questions. You, if I prepared a list of questions and I didn't know exactly what you did, I would be misfiring on all grounds. And that is exactly what people do, especially when they come to um, you know, members of government in your position. They come with all these complaints, all these you know, grievances, and then you're not in a position to solve them. Meanwhile, we're not directing it at the actual people who can actually do anything about it. And these are valid questions. You've raised it. Money is being given back to us. Where's, Where's it going? going to? But in the end, I can get it now. People would go to the people who they have access to easily. So it's building up to the election. It's not just we've been crying out get your PVC as well, which by the way, is still super important. If you haven't collected it, go collect it. But also know the right thing, know the information. I'm learning that also you can go to a sitting of the house. You're allowed to. Imagine if a couple of us just went in, just to look, obviously not yeah, to go in and, to and, and cause a riot, yeah. but mm -hmm. to go and look. And then we actually have information on what they're really doing. So it would help us even form the right assessment on you know, how to judge performance. I think that's something that's happened as well. We even have a committee for petitions. You can petition to the house, complain about the judiciary or the executive, and they will try to look at it. For example, you, have, you, 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 you bought a land in an estate, for example, and the, the estate uh, director is, is not giving you your land, you have right to come. We have that public complaint uh, side section of it. And they will invite them and all that. But like I said, we all are involved. Look at the local government, it's unfortunate. I was one time a local government uh, chairman. People don't even know who their local government chairman is. Yes, right now. But in our time, we, we, we at least not for anything, yeah. We grade the road, we maintain the, the we call them dispensary, them, the inner health centers and all that. Because local markets. But you see, the governor will just come and take care of all those things because it's, it's more of revenue generation. Let me tell you, for example, something that is not in the Constitution that it got a lot of our money security votes. There's no law for it. There's nowhere in any law, whether the local, state, or uh, national, that there's law that says you should share, receive security votes. If a governor is on, on a 500 million security vote, for example, that is minimum. But a lot of them are far, far higher than that. So another thing I so want in, to highlight... So in, in, one, in two months, it would be one billion rich. That can do it, you know, at least 10 kilometers of foot. So there's one thing I wanted to highlight about the coming elections as well. So this is very common. Now, a lot of us, a lot, I'm using us because we can, we can be guilty of this. You can be guilty of this. Are focusing more on governorship elections, presidential election. But then, like you said, you're the lawmakers. And when the lawmakers feel like their hands are tied, when there's unequal representation, when you're not voting the right person who makes the law, then there's an issue. Because, of course, you'd have a situation that you're complaining about right now where, oh, you know, you're trying to implement a good law, but if two thirds have to agree, or if a good number of people have to agree to something that would make actual change, and then people with um, ethnic differences are fighting against it, then of course nothing would happen. So we also need to pay attention to all these other elections as well. They're important, even when it comes to your local government chairman, all these little, we, we tend to dismiss them and just let anybody go there and just sit down and don't even pay attention to them. So that's also something that we're trying to highlight here, that it's important to pay attention. Exactly. Mm -hmm. When it comes to, you know, who is representing you as well, and not just generally, because the president is just really one man. And he's not even the man working. It's one the man that is very powerful. One man, the if number the, one citizen, If the yes. president, for example, says this building will live here today, it will go down today, not tomorrow, because he said so. But where institutions work, yes, like in in US or UK, for example, where institutions work, you challenge the president exactly in the judiciary, 
Are you understanding me? But here, since the president has signed it, before you know, the police have, and they will violate the law. So even if you have a court order. So these are these are why we need actual people, not just you know that one man. We actually need people mm. that are it, ready it, to it challenge. If we come, if because you can see the youths are just waking up now, having a realization that the country belongs to them. And I'm becoming you see you are the leaders of tomorrow. A lot of them are followers. Mm, true. And you understand because you are, you are not even bothered. I, I was listening to it uh, arise yesterday. When they ask somebody, who do you, a young a youth, a girl, or say, who do you want to vote for? Oh, I'm going to vote for Obi. And then uh, the question that follows, do you have a PVC? He said, no, I will not uh, get a PVC. How do you know? So I'm how? She uh, <laughs> <laughs> <Peter, laughs> oh, uh, Obi. He said, no, anytime I go there, the place is filled up. So I, I really don't. In fact, the country is gone. They know they vote with mouth, too. That's yes. what we have to say. So you now see that. <laughs> so you now find that uh, we are already on our way out. It's your country. I don't know what I you understand. Know, because I have the privilege of en en enjoying scholarship. There was what you call indigent scholarship, and there was what you call uh, uh, academic scholarship. Whichever one you can. And we had what we call. Uh, uh, Education bank then, yeah, where people can okay. take loan. Even it still happens in uh, in the US where you can take loan to do your masters it's and all yeah, the yeah. loan and all that. We have scholarship, basic scholarship. I enjoyed too. I enjoyed both indigent and um, scholarship. So how many of those are open now without nepotism involved? No. In fact, the people that get scholarship in this country are those who have the capacity to pay. To pay. So in fact that those situation. who ought to have it don't even know whether such a thing exists. So you find that those who get government quarters these days are those who have buildings who can afford to build their own building. So the local houses that government is building is still taken by the high cost, uh, high ranking elites. So uh, basically we need a full turnaround. We need to have uh, people, you know, should be educated. In fact, do you know that we don't even know our rights? Yes, no, that's something no, we that's... actually established in one of our conversations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. we don't know. Right now, we don't even know uh, our rights. You see, recently, the IG tried to intervene, or police just come in to brutalize you for nothing. But when few of them are dismissed by the IG, now you see there's a lot of decorum. How many can cry out? How many have a phone to be able to video and post? It was because it went viral. We don't even know you, you are walking on and somebody just says, stop you, let me have your phone. Before you know you are even, if you go to the prison, if you do an oversight to prison, see you know, of them are there innocently. So we don't even know, and you see all these people that currently the youth say, oh, we are going to, to vote this and, uh, and that, how is it going to work? Because on that day, it's the youth that will disturb the youth. So, thank you so much, sir. I think we've established a whole lot of things today. I believe that you have been enlightened as well. We have. I know I have. And it's not just on the government, it's on you as well. You have a role to play. You have a role to play in electing, you have a role to play in performing, in also when like like you said, like you said, you know, figuring out a way to make things work for yourself and not just waiting on the government to feed you everything. And we've also discussed about, you know, some of the things the government can do, how we need a total turnaround and how we need to come out to vote. And that's was what this episode was about. So thank you so much, thank sir, you for much. joining us on thank this episode. So would you like to say goodbye in Isan? Well, I'm uh, I'm Ah, it sounds so powerful. <laughs> Is it just me? We'll see again. Yes, we'll definitely see again. Yeah, so thank you so much. Please. Hi. So it's been another episode 
of State of the Culture, do make sure to download our app and it's available, like Tina said, on all streaming platforms on the iOS store, on the Google Play store. Please make sure to check it out. And we're so very grateful for our guest. Yes, so again, he joined us. He is the representative of Asan Central and Asan West and Igwebe, federal constituency of Edo State Honorable Joseph Ejion Willy. Joseph Ewawon Ejion Willy. Hey, I missed the last, I missed that one. <laughs> I think I need to take an extra class to learn that middle uh, name, yes. but I would definitely do that. We also have something that we normally offer our guests. Mm. You know, just a little token, you know, to take mm. away, sir. Uh -uh. So this is yours. Mm. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much, sir, for coming. Okay. Thank you for joining us. I really hope to see <laughs> no, <laughs> you this, showing you our content. But, but before you, you know, because uh, <laughs> this is what is here. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, and then our little yes, Jota. So something to remember us by. Yes, Please yes, keep yes. it. I appreciate this. All right. Thank you so much. Like Thank Frederick you. said, don't forget to download our app. It's on wherever you download your apps. It's Easy Asan. Speak Asan. Don't forget to comment and follow us on social media. Our handle is Easy Asan. Speak Asan across different platforms. Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn. You'd find us there. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Angiatin Justina. This is State of the Culture.